In the 1970s, when I was a teenager, I would spend a week or two in the summer visiting my grandparents in Cadillac. They lived just down the street from the Ann Arbor Yard, a location the railroad called Selma. My grandfather's office was in Cadillac, a block from the Ann Arbor Freight Office. I thus got acquainted with Jim Jones, the agent operator. There were still a number of records from the late 1950s and 1960s stored upstairs, which he let me take. Back in the 1950s, the railroad had been much busier. A number of car ferry routes funneled traffic into Frankfurt. Now this requires a clarification because the railroad yard and car ferry slips were actually across Betsy Lake from Frankfurt in Alberta, and the railroad called it boat landing. Nevertheless, trains were symboled TF for Toledo to Frankfurt, or FT for Frankfurt to Toledo. Multiple trains ran daily in each direction. Meets were a necessity. By the time I arrived at Cadillac in the 1970s, the railroad and car ferry network were a shadow of their former selves. Just FT2 and TF5 traversed the railroad now. Local switching was handled by the Cadillac turn that came down from boat landing and returned. Ironically, the lineup form had gotten larger even though there were less trains. Normally, only one train would be on the railroad between Cadillac and boat landing at a time. Whereas the late 1950s saw a busy train sheet at Cadillac, by the 1970s, a week's worth of trains fit on one sheet. My first Ann Arbor photography was taken with a Kodak Instamatic camera in 1971 before the DT&I power was returned and Ann Arbor got its power back. By my return in the summer of 1972, all the power was back in place, as seen here with FT2 working the yard, with five of the ten GP35s. All photos are in Cadillac unless otherwise noted. The general operating pattern during the 1970s was TF5 came through Cadillac in the morning. After his arrival at boat landing, FT2 would depart, coming through Cadillac in the afternoon. After TF5's crew was rested, a Cadillac turn was run from boat landing down to Cadillac to do local switching. In the early 1970s, Engine 21 was his normal power. He generally arrived in the evening. He then ran back to boat landing and tied up. Once rested, and after TF5 had arrived, they would take FT2 home. The road crews were based out of Owasso. Returning to Cadillac each summer, there were noticeable variations. In the mid-1970s, a GP35 replaced number 21 on the Cadillac turn. Some years, FT2 did not run daily. If it was a day FT2 did not run, the Cadillac turn could bring the traffic to Cadillac and set it out to await pickup by the next FT2. Eastward trains out of boat landing encountered several grades of around 1% en route to Cadillac. Doing this prevented heavy trains out of boat landing. Another variation was the Cadillac turn bringing the sand out of Yuma down to Cadillac for pickup by the next FT2. These scenarios would occasionally result in big trains out of Cadillac such as the 125-car FT2 seen here during my 1975 visit. Behind the scenes, a lot was happening too. In 1973, the Ann Arbor filed for bankruptcy. John M. Chase Jr. was appointed trustee, 
and the DTNI was contracted with to operate the railroad. In 1976, the state of Michigan purchased from the trustee Ashley to Cadillac and leased from Cadillac to Frankfurt. Eventually, they would purchase this portion too. GTW purchased from Durand to Ashley. The state contracted with Conrail to operate the Ann Arbor. This lasted for a year and a half when the state then contracted with Michigan Interstate. This resulted in a change to the Ann Arbor's outward image. Speaking of image, each locomotive had its own personality. Engine 389 has both the Compass Herald and Mars light. Engine 393 is missing the Mars light. Engine 390 is missing both. Likewise, the horn could vary from engine to engine. Let's listen to number 21 now. How about now we just enjoy some scenes of the Ann Arbor?
My grandfather and uncle grew Christmas trees around Cadillac. These first two shots are from the 1966 Christmas season showing cars being loaded on what appears to be the Y at Selma, with what I assume are their trees. This last shot state is unknown but presumably is Cadillac also. I give a belated thank you to everybody at the Ann Arbor who would take a few minutes to accommodate an inquisitive teenager, save their train orders, and allow the removal of bundles of records. It was another era then. Oh, and another thank you to Jim Boyd, then the associate editor of Railroad Model Craftsman magazine, whose article on the Ann Arbor appeared in the November 1973 issue. In it, he mentions an encounter at Cadillac with me 